As we all know, 3D technology is no stranger to change and progress, because over time, 3D software went from only the ability to show wireframe models in the viewport to now the ability to render real-time renders, which is a huge jump. And recently, we have witnessed a new wave of never-seen-before 3D software entering the scene. And today, we're gonna go over three software that are helping 3D artists work faster and more efficiently when it comes to animation, modeling, and simulation. So without further ado, let's jump right in. First, let's talk about Cascador, an AI-assisted, physics-based animation system that was brought to life by the brilliant mind of Eugene Diabin. And while it officially made its public debut in 2019, the roots of the software stretch back to 2006, when it began its journey as an internal animation tool for Neki, a video game development company which was established in 2002 by Dmitry Trikin. And the company has been using the software ever since its creation in games such as Shadow Fight 4 and Spine. This is cool and everything, but the current question at hand is, how is Cascador changing animation? Well, it does in so many ways, because it offers animators a unique intelligent rigging system that uses the power of neutral networks, or AI if you will, to help us create poses more easily and quickly, in a semi-automatic manner, simply by moving the main control points, and then the AI or position the rest of the body automatically. To complement this feature, it also comes with an auto physics tool, which can allow us to automatically generate realistic and natural motions between the keyframes just like magic. In addition, it offers the ability to add secondary motions and customize the effect on any body part separately, as well as a drag and drop joint system for quick rigging, and a long range of animation tools such as trajectories, copy tool, IK and FK interpolation, a graph editor, in addition to other stuff. But look, despite being fun, 3D animation is undeniably a tedious process and a hard skill to acquire, a sentiment that can be felt in the statement of this aspiring animator who expressed, not sure if I hate 3D animation or if it is because I am a beginner. I am three weeks in it and I hate it. Is this normal? Maya is so complicated, and I have a hard time wrapping my head around the graph editor. The exciting thing is that Cascador not only addresses this aspect, but also takes an ethical stance on the AI dilemma in the creative industry, because it serves as a tool to assist animators rather than replacing them, by making the work less tedious, more efficient, and the better you are as an artist, the better the animation becomes. Personally, I can see it as a software that can become a pioneer in animation, and one that can open the doors to many other software of its kind, as a tool to help animators save effort and time. Before we continue, if you want to learn animation in Blender, one of the best places to start is the 2Animate Animation Course. If you are a beginner, you don't have to worry about it, because the course is divided into beginner, intermediate, and advanced levels, so you can take away the best knowledge for your current level and learn at the pace that you are comfortable with. You will learn how to create amazing animation shots that help you stand out with 70 plus animation lessons updated on a continual basis, in addition to dialogue clips, feature quality rigs and assets, community access, and technical assistance. So, if you are interested, you will find the necessary links in the description. From character animation, let's now jump to simulation of effects like fire, smoke, and explosions. Now, allow me to ask you a question. Have you ever tried to create a fire in 3D, for example? If you have, I bet that you spent more time waiting for your results than the time you spent trying to create the effects in the first place because it is a process that takes a ridiculous amount of time since simulating the movement of the fire, for example, demands heavy calculations, especially on your hardware, in addition to waiting sometimes for hours, depending on the scale of the project and your machine, of course. 
To solve this challenge, there is a 3D software that emerged in recent years as a potential solution and this software in question is called Embergen. But how does it do that? Well, Embergen is a real-time fluid simulation software that has been around since 2020 and was officially released in 2023. It stands as a GPU-based volumetric fluid simulator that makes it possible to produce fire and smoke effects in real time, with a level of complexity that was only in offline tools before. In other words, you can see it on your screen without any delays, and you can directly interact with it in real time, which we'll go over in detail in just a minute. But first, to give you a quick insight, it was developed by Jenga FX, a company that came into existence through the efforts of Nick Sievert, an entrepreneur with expertise in both startups and real-time visual effects. And he founded the company back in 2016. And today, Embergen is used by over 200 leading game development and film studios, including What Facts, Blizzard, and Ubisoft. From what I can see, its unique usage of the GPU allows the software to provide us with the power to simulate and render volumetric fire and explosions in real time faster than ever before. Besides, it also generates random seeds to create new variations of the animation on the go, while also being deterministic, which means that the simulation is the same each time we open the project. And for those who are already familiar with this type of software, such as Houdini, Embergen isn't that much different. In essence, I mean. It is essentially a particles-based software in which we can create simulations by combining nodes with each other, which are a set of small boxes with each one of them having a particular set of features. For example, the particles emission node that we can use to edit the parameters of the particles that the smoke and the fire would be based on, such as the number of particles and initial force. And for those that can't be bothered with any of that, it also comes with over a hundred preset projects that you can instantly start using on the go, and a professionally designed and simple interfaces, as well as the ability to generate game-ready, fully assembled flipbooks in just seconds, which are in simple terms, turning the simulations into a set of images that can be played in ordered sequence. You know, an animation basically that we can also easily loop with just a few clicks among many other features. On a similar note, Jenga FX didn't stop there, because behind the curtain they were also working on another exciting solution that goes by the name of Liquigen. It sounds a bit familiar, doesn't it? Because it was originally announced in 2020 and was only released recently on the 12th of February of 2024 as a closed alpha. Liquigen is designed to be a real-time solution to render lifelike liquid animations. And even though the newly released alpha version still lacks some of the important features such as surface tension, viscosity, and foam, it seems like it has a bright future ahead of it. In terms of the software itself, honestly, it feels like it is a copycat of Embergen, mainly because it is from the same company, and it is similar in almost everything from the user interface to the node system, and the way their engines function as well. It's like they were separated at birth, except that Liquigen tackles on fluid simulations rather than fire and smoke. Last but not least, we have Plasticity, a software that came out of nowhere to solve a long-lasting issue that kept 3D modelers on their toes for years. Officially released in 2023 by Nick Callum, a computer programmer and an ex-system engineer at Twitter, he succeeded at addressing a challenge that many dared to face and failed before him, and that is making a CAD modeling software that is designed for 3D artists who create art rather than engineering or product design. Traditionally, polygonal-based software like Blender, Xenon 4D, Max, or Maya have been the only one used by 3D modelers, a type of modeling where we have to rely on a set of faces, edges, and vertices to create different 3D models. But this can be tedious compared to CAD modeling. CAD takes a math-based approach to 3D modeling where we can add an infinite amount of detail to our 3D models without worrying about the concerns related to polygons, 
because, well, there aren't any polygons to begin with. And even though this category of software has been in existence for many years and even decades, the issue with them is that they were designed for engineers and product designers. On the other hand, plasticity feels like a polygonal modeling software. From the user interface, which consists of, for example, a set of tools on the right side of the software, in addition to the way we move in the 3D space, which makes it look like a 3D modeling software that any artist can use. As a matter of fact, we can also set it up to have the same movement as our favorite 3D software, whether it be Blender, Maya, Max, Cinema 4D, you name it, while also offering two CAD systems that we can combine to model with. The first one is pair solids, and not to bore you with the details and the technical terms, in essence, it is like polygonal modeling, but without limitations. For example, we can add booleans and bevels however we want. And the other one is a nerve-based curve approach, and that is by combining 2D lines that we can edit however we want, to create shapes between them with smooth transitions. It also offers the ability to convert the models into polygons to be later used in other software for video games or films, for example. And for the tool itself, I think it offers a fresh alternative to the traditional type of modeling that we are used to. And while polygonal modeling is here to stay, I think going forward, both can serve as a two distinct solutions, which we can use depending on the project we are working on. Also keep in mind that this video was more than an overview of the tools rather than a detailed explanation of what they do. So if you haven't heard of any of these, I recommend you try them because they are fantastic. So thank you guys very much for watching, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up, you can also check some of our previous videos, thanks for watching again and I will see you in the next one.